At the age of 93, Anna Pistova was believed to have been responsible for upwards of 50 to 150 deaths by poisoning. Believed by some to be the oldest serial killer in history, Pistova was more frequently known by newspapers as Baba Onyoika. Before discussing the results of her 1929 trial, we must trace what little evidence exists of the early history of Pistova. Basing my search off her birth name of Anna Draxon, I managed to find some likely relatives. Incredibly, her potential relative Maria Draxon had immigrated to Canada nearly the same year as my family, both to Winnipeg and both from the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. Although speculative, the birth date of 1858, her Romanian heritage, and the surname spelling would make Maria a likely match to Baba Anoika. Baba Anoika was believed to be born somewhere in Romania to a wealthy rancher's family. Although the exact location was initially unknown, the connection to Maria is correct. This would place her birthplace as Petrovicello, Romania. It is believed that she was born as early as 1836, although by her account given it was 1838. Her family would then relocate to the village of Vladimirovac, inspiring her eventual nickname as the Witch of Vladimirovac. As the daughter of a wealthy Romanian trader, she was able to attend private school in the nearby city of Pancebo. It is said that after she graduated, she was seduced by an Austrian military officer and contracted syphilis. After the officer abandoned the 20-year-old Anna Draxon, she was left bitter and ill with syphilis. While in solitude, she devoted her time to scholarly reading with a focus on medical text. Her father eventually arranged a marriage to a wealthy landowner, a man with the last name Pistova, also written as Pistonia. She gave birth to 11 children, with only one surviving to adulthood. Anna's husband was much older than her and passed after 20 years of marriage. It is believed that Anna took up work at a local cafe that was renowned in the Banat district for its catering offerings. It is said that after the death of her husband, Anna established a laboratory in a wing of her home. Known for her competency in preparing ingredients, it wasn't long before she transitioned her clientele to taking interest in her home remedies. Before long, she established herself as Baba Anoika and grew a reputation for proficiency in preparing remedies and potions. Although no real evidence supports the claims, stories tell of Anoika appearing to defy age and death. She outlived 10 of her children, died around the age of 100, and at the time of her death looked in her 60s. Accounts from German newspapers retell the mysterious dealings of Baba Anoika and in specific, her most famed magic water. Anoika apparently provided a solution for wives far and wide who were stuck in loveless marriages. Allegedly, all she requested her clients to bring was one white chicken, one black chicken, a bag of ashes, threes, basil, and incense. She would apparently ask the client how big the problem was to indicate the strength of the potion. After spreading the ashes, lighting incense, and muttering a few words, she would fill a bottle with clear liquid. After ringing a bell three times, she would solidify the agreement with the devil and provide her client with the solution. In actuality, Baba Anoika was likely providing her clients with lethally dosed arsenic water and a combination of, of Datura Datula, otherwise known as Jimson Weed. Whether her customers were fully aware of it or not, Baba was serving her customers certain death. Although records of the proceedings apparently no longer exist, it was noted during her 1929 trial that Baba Anoika was charged in June 1914 as an accessory to a poisoning, but later acquitted. One of the most mysterious associations that Baba Noika was rumored to have was with a group known as Lucretia. Details are minimal, but the Romanian news platform Telegraph claims that Baba was one of the six female members involved in the group. The group was named after the infamous Lucretia Borgia, who became the subject of folk legend for supposed poisonings. She allegedly had a hollow ring used to poison drinks at the Borgia family's elaborate dinner parties. Dr. Simon Darmati claims in his 2007 study of Baba Anuyuka that her first victims were Maria and Tito Vacarescu, an 18-year-old married couple. The couple were said to have been walking home that evening, only to have been met by Anuyuka on her doorstep, offering the two lemonade. After accepting, the two inevitably died eight days later from poison. During the 1920s, it is said that Anoika formed a valuable partnership with a woman known as Lubina Milenkov. With the witch now in her 90s, she used Milenkov as a salesman for her deadly wares. The 
the witch of Vlada Morovac was known by locals as someone who could cure diseases and kill by order. Her clients varied from those in family quarrels, love affairs, and even young men looking to be released from the army. In 1924, Baba Noika made contact with Stana Mamarov, who was looking to cure her alcoholic husband, Lazar Ladowski. For 23,000 dinar, she found a deadly solution, roughly 23,000 USD modern day. Stana would go on to marry another man from the same village, and in a case of no apparent coincidence, her new husband's rich uncle would die under similar circumstances a few months later. The police would question Stana, and she provided authorities with a name they were already familiar with, Baba Anoika. By late 1926, Sima and Sofia Mamarov enlisted the services of Anoika to resolve a family quarrel with Sima's 70-year-old father, Nikola. Nikola was allegedly an abusive alcoholic towards his children and grandchildren. Nikola's 16-year-old granddaughter, Olga Sturza, would be the very one to deliver the deadly potion to Nikola. It is said that Sofia was connected to Anoika through Danica Stoyak, who helped facilitate the 5,000 dinar sale. In addition to Lazar Ladowski and Nikola Mamarov, several similar poisonings occurred in the surrounding areas. Two notable deaths included the death of a rich restaurateur, Geibel, and the mayor of Benatsko, Novoselo, Dr. Kosto Karina. Inevitably, state authorities issued an arrest order for Baba Noika after investigating the widespread occurrence of poisonings. Around June 11, 1929, the gendarmes apprehended Anoika and took her to the Penchivo prison. Her arrest would lead to the Yugoslavian authorities making six more arrests and exhuming ten bodies for examination. The arrested six included Lubina Milenkov, Stana Mamarov, Sofia Mamarov, Lazar Sima Mamarov, Olga Sturza, and the widow of Dr. Karina. The exhumed bodies were sent to the Chemical Institute of the University of Belgrade and revealed that all ten men died from organic plant poison, likely arsenic. Alongside the bodies, samples collected from Anoika's house were tested to reveal arsenic. Anoika denied all allegations and claimed it was only foot medicine. When questioned, the women claimed to have never known the lethality of the potions. Various accounts told of Baba Anoika's reputation for selling poison, causing frequent verbal outbursts from the old witch. Go straight, straight to hell, hell you devil's, devil's brood. brood. The proceedings continued with Anoika feigning ignorance over the deaths, and pretending to be hard of hearing when faced with difficult questions. Noika was only given 15 years in prison for her accomplice to two murders, although she was indicted on 10 other separate murder charges and was suspected to have contributed to anywhere between 50 to 150 deaths. She blamed all of the casualties on Milenkov, and the court ultimately felt that she was too old to be a candidate for capital punishment. After an appeal, Stana Mamarov, Sofia Mamarov, and Sima Mamarov were all sentenced to life. Lubina Milenkov was given 10 years, and Olga Sturza and Danika Stoyak were both acquitted. sentenced to hard labor, Anoika was released after only eight years and is thought to have died in her home at the age of 100. Rumors claim that when Nazi Germany invaded Yugoslavia in 1941, they released the elderly woman from her prison sentence. The true extent of Baba Anoika's crimes will likely never be known for sure. Whether she was a witch or just a talented herbalist, the reputation of Anna Pistova certainly has extended beyond her years.